Good evening, farm fans. It is mm, after eight. Um, spring is kind of here, so we're getting into the late nights a little bit again. Um, we have to do a little service work here on our L230. Do, 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 do. L230, see I'm not lying to you. Because um, we're going to be using it pretty well non-stop the next three or four days here. So we got to change some of the filters and things. The oil doesn't need to be done yet, and I did grease the boom recently, so we don't have to do those. But we have some other filters in the back here that we're going to do tonight. So let's get started. Open up the hood, or as they will say in other countries, the bonnet. First one we're going to do is the air filter, which is this guy back here. So well, I think that usually happens. I don't remember if there's another one underneath or not. I wonder if it just twists here. So let me set you guys down just a second here. I think this thing twists off of there if I remember right. I think it usually is a pain though. Top. Aha! Well, it does not want to twist either direction, and I know it does, and I know it's usually a pain, so give me just one second here. Okay, well, I'm going to again try and sit you down here, see if you can see. We got our good friend, the rubber mallet. Let's see if we can get this thing to let go here. There it goes. I remember that thing is usually a quite a pain here. Holy crap. You see that puff of smoke that just came out of it? Or not smoke, but dirt. Whew. The filters in these machines seem to get dirty so fast. And this one is very, very dirty. Holy crap. Okay, so let's grab you guys here. I don't know if you can see how dirty that is, but I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll use that as our bench. Here is the new filter. You can get an idea of the difference in color. Oh yeah, I think you can see that. This filter is a couple years old now, and some of you guys out there might say, well, why don't you just blow the filter out? And I've done that quite a few times already. So it's really just time to go ahead and replace it with another one. You can only do that so many times before the paper starts to shred and, and we're getting to about that point on there because these things are not cheap. I think this thing is 60 or 70 bucks. And the really annoying thing about it is I cannot find an aftermarket filter anywhere. Um, all I can find is the factory ones. So I'm kind of stuck. I think most of the filters for this machine, with the exception of the engine oil I know, I think there's maybe one filter you can get for this thing aftermarket. And the rest of them, for some reason, they just don't make them, probably, so you have to buy them. So let's grab a rag here. Um, I'll set you guys back down over here for a minute. Move my hammer. And I want to wipe out the chamber here because it's pretty dirty. So that way we can start fresh here. I'll send some put in there. Eh, we'll take that inner out for a minute too. So we can clean in here. We haven't quite got to the dustiest time of year, which is usually late spring, early summer, after the mud finally disappears from the spring, um, then it seems to always get super dry and that's when this filter gets ridiculous. So I think next time I'm going to have to change the inner one as well. Let's 
see if we can get that back in there. So, right. so this guy here is pretty dirty too, which is funny since it hasn't been dusty, but I'm going to clean this up. This stuff is, the particles are so fine, it chokes you a little bit. Gee, man. Shove the rag in there. Let's see if we can get it cleaned up. Okay. Is that thing empty? Yep. All right. So we got that cleaned up. I'm gonna don't make you dig here. There we go. We're gonna go back that way, and we will put our new fresh clean filter in here. If I can get it in here without killing that. The inner, knocking that out of whack. That wouldn't be good. There she goes. That should be it. Now, I'm going to put this thing back on. And they actually have it, so it makes sense. There's a little thing here that says top. I don't know if you can read that. And there's a lock and unlock. So they kind of have it, so it makes sense. Counterclockwise, you unlock it and clockwise to lock it back on. So we just kind of get this thing lined up here. Like that-ish. Is it on there? Not quite. That does not want to agree with me tonight at all. Nope. So new, it doesn't want to go in there. Okay. Boy, that does not want to stay in there. The filter is popping it out just enough to make my life a pain. And I put some cardboard down so we don't spill fuel and things later. So I'm tripping on that. get it seated in there all the way. I guess I'm used to the old one going in and out easy since it was wore out. The rubber wasn't as flexible. Or it was more flexible. There she goes. Now, let's see if we can tap this again. that and make sure you guys have seen what I'm doing here okay and you put this little goofy thing in here that just kind of locks it So that is done and they have this little extra dust collector thingy that you can empty out here so that's why they have that labeled the top kind of dark in there sorry these GoPros which I'm used to using a lot of people use video cameras but the GoPros don't have this one doesn't um, a uh, 
flash or anything on it so it's kind of dark but so the next thing we're going to do open up the back here throw the rag out of the way there we go we should rinse that radiator out too might do that tomorrow yeah that's pretty dirty so how's our hydraulic hydraulic is good um, so we have the hydraulic oil filter we're going to change and we have the fuel filter over here that we're going to change so that's why we have the cardboard we're going to shove under there so let's see I'm going to put you guys down for a second while I grab a couple of wrenches so just hang on one minute okay Got you on the tripod. Got cardboard. I got a little drain pan here, and we're gonna try these guys here. Let's see if we can get it to loosen up with this. So I think we need to go this way, right? This way. I'm gonna come back my way here. I think. Let's see if it'll... Bending the filter pretty good. Yeah, it does not look like it's going to want to come out there without ruining it. Let me see if I've got another filter wrench here. An actual one of the bandy ones that. Okay, so we got this guy. So let me see if I put this on right. I think we need to go this way. Is that going to fit? Just go. Okay. So let's try it out. Whew. Holy crap. Yeah, this way. If I turn that one, yeah. Of course they put it on the door, so the door wiggles all over the stinking place. Yeah. Let me try. Just to see if we can kind of jerk it a little bit here. get another kind of wrench okay so I move this up and we're just starting to get it to move we managed to bend the wrench but we have liftoff 
So, let's get all diesel-y because I'm out of the nice little, they're not plastic, but you know what I mean, the shot gloves there, kind of the latexy ones. I am out of those. I'm going to set that in there. Okay. We have, why well, don't mind my face, we have a brand new one right here. Hopefully it's the same number, I should have checked before I took it off. 977, yes. So, give me just one second here. And I got some diesel fuel. here. Try and fill this filter up as best we can here. You guys and girls out there that know about diesels know that you don't want any air in there. And for the people that don't know that, since diesels run under compression, if you have air in there, it can monkey the whole thing up on you. And I had an employee of mine. Where is my rag? Way the heck over there. Great, great place to leave it. There we go. An employee of mine decided to run the skid steer as low as they could on fuel, and they ran it out of fuel. And I could not find anywhere on this machine, any kind of a little pump to get the air out. So I had to crack injectors to get the air out. Oh, hang on. Skip the step. And take some of that diesel fuel there and just make sure we coat the top of that ring. Okay. Done deal. Let's take our rag here and just make sure that is of course, the door has to keep moving. Make sure that where that rubber seal is going to go is clean. And here we go. What do we got? Three quarters of the turn. Uh oh, don't go crooked now. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. I think we got her going now. There's contact. So now we want to go three quarters of a turn after that. Which is almost three quarters. And we'll take our little wrench in here. And we'll just... Oh, there. And that should do it. So now we have a nice, clean fuel filter on there. And uh, tomorrow we'll check that for leaks when we run it. So, that is done. Now we have, ouch, staple stab. That's not very nice to them to package that like that. And get this thing out of here. Okay, we have a hydraulic oil filter to do as well. So, let me get you repositioned here real quick. There you go, okay. So the filter we're changing now is this one up here. And we'll just have to hope it's the right one because I cannot read the numbers that's on it. Huh. It looks the same from what I can tell. The only interesting thing about this new filter that is not on my old one they, it looks like they give you a little drive here to shove a ratchet or an extension into, maybe to help get it on and off. The old one does not have that. Hmm. So, it doesn't mean it's a different filter. It could mean it's a convenience thing. But I am a little bit worried. It's got the flare on the end. So, 
We'll just have to go for it. I guess worst case scenario is we have to put the old one back on if the numbers don't match. So let me just make sure you guys can see what we're going. Yeah, should be able to see what we're doing there. Might not be able to see me, but that's okay. You don't need to see my ugly mug here. So I'm going to show some rags in here. Maybe even grab a couple other ones. Because when this thing lets go, it's going to run down all over the place. And the battery's right down there. <clears throat> and there's a million little areas for that oil to go that you'll never get it cleaned back up. Never. Unless you rip everything apart. So, there we go. Let's try that. I'll get one rag ready for me. Right? Okay. What do I do with the oil filter wrench for that? I lost it already. Oh, there it is. That's a different size, different wrench. So, we do have some cardboard down and stuff. So, let's give this a shot. Oh, oh. well, what do you know? That was a super easy one. If we can do it right in here. Kind of, sort of. Quick like lightning. Oh, oh my god. What a mess. What a mess. Oh, what a mess. What a double mess. What a mess. Did not expect. That to be quite so messy as it was, and now this new one refuses to go back on there. It's leaking all over the place here. What is your problem? You've got to be kidding. It's cross thread all go on. Meanwhile, I'm losing 12 gallons of hydraulic oil. 477. Mm -hmm. It does not seem like it wants to go on. Not seem right. problem with these machines is you know they put pans underneath them to protect everything underneath and then the problem is well not so much this time is it usually that stuff doesn't want to come out and now it's all over my school still running all over the place so I'm going to get a shop light so give me just a second here Okay, so I got a light. It is a mess in there. And of course, you can't get in there. There's a few panels on the bottom of the machine you can take.